Hi, this is John from Dynas Spectrum. I want to introduce here an overview of Project Sabre, also known as Custom Maps, which is a new feature that we've added to 2.5 and 4 liter Audis and expect to feature on any forthcoming products. It allows the tuner to customize 16 new 16 by 16 maps which are initially blank for their own purposes. They can string them together. They can define the X and the Y axes as any inputs that they like. And then the contents of the map can replace the original map calculation that's involved or do other things like output to a device on CAMBOS to drive other hardware. These inputs can be from CAMBOS, they can be from other maps that have already been calculated, or you can select any variable you like that's in the ECU. We have many of them defined in the files that are available with the DS1. Hundreds in fact. So you can pick all the usual stuff like RPM, boost pressure, target boost, ignition we've added things like wheel slip ethanol content whatever you want you can basically put in so the way these are called is we have a table called call here and initially this list that's shown forgive some of them are just cut off from the the justification of the text you can actually see the full names Yeah, so for example, the fan one is just slightly cut off at the left there. Um, you can see all these maps. Basically, when these are looked up, and in this case, most of them or all of them are in flex fuel or map switching, after they've been calculated and blended for flex fuel, they come into one of these custom maps. If you enable this as the x axis, so what we do with these four zeros here, this is actually a 16 bit value in hex, which means we can select any or all of 16 custom maps that we want this particular one to trigger. We're going to pick KF, RLX, TSRN, which is on the maps that we have in map switching anyway, which I will show to you. There is. The x axis of this is RPM, the y axis is air temperature, and it selects a maximum load. So, what you can do if you put a 1 in here, then bit 0 is set, which means that once this has been calculated, it will then run custom map 0, which is here. The result of this will appear in the x-axis of this map. In the y-axis, you can add another variable that you want, and then you can populate all of this. This is 16-bit, which is as much as any resolution as any table in the CCU has. The axes are 16-bit. They can be signed or unsigned. It's all linearly interpolated. So you can make your own calculation or modification to the output of this table based on any other variable you want. You can then send this table's output and use that as the input of the next table, or you can log it and so on. So we can also define within each of these custom maps which of the map switches it will be enabled in. So for example, if you were writing a special feature here and you only wanted it to be enabled in map switch 2, you can do that by setting this value here. In the calculation, for each of the custom maps, we can choose what happens. We can either replace the value of the original calculation with a new one, or we can add to it, we can multiply it, that sort of thing. 
Uh, we also have other options there, such as setting a minimum or a maximum or integrating, which could be useful for making, say, a new boost controller on a normally aspirated engine, like a V10, for example. Uh, in action, we determine what we do with the result, and the default is zero, which means that whatever we do here doesn't actually replace the value of this map. It just gets logged. But once you're happy with the calculation, you can then start using it by changing that to one, which writes the calculation, or you can use it to output on CAN bar, show check engine light, switch map, all that sort of thing. You can define whether the X, Y, and Z contents of the map are signed or unsigned, eight or 16 bit. And there's also a parameter for setting whether the whole table is enabled beyond just the mask of map switches that are used. By default, the X address, if set to zero, will just be the output of this map here going into the X axis of this one. But you can trigger this custom map, for example, what just after this map's been calculated, but you don't have to use the result of that. You can use any address in the ECU's RAM that you like. In the same way, if the Z address is left at zero, then it just gets logged or replaces this if you like. But you can also copy the result to any other address. And so if you knew that address was free, you could write this, put it somewhere else, log it, and so on. We do have areas to store the result from each of the 16 custom maps anyway. And they're defined in the data logging monitors. So you can string all these together, log and manipulate things as you wish. For the integrator that will feature in a bit more depth another time, we have a minimum and maximum value which prevents so-called integrator wind-up, which I won't explain here, but is an essential part of a PID loop. Also, when the enable condition is satisfied, that resets the integrator. Finally, there's four views of different signed and unsigned types of axes. They're actually all of the same table, but they're shown for your convenience so that if you are using signed or unsigned 8 or 16-bit values for your X, Y, and Z values, you can conveniently display it that way. And that's really it. So it lets you string together customizations as you wish in a novel way it saves potentially months of handwritten, troublesome assembly language that few people actually ever pull off. Had we not actually written FlexFuel already, you could use the system to make that. You could use it for custom traction control. For example, you could take ignition timing, uh, which would be KFCW. And you could take the output of that map so for example, let's bring up the ignition map in the map switch. KFCW for gasoline here. So what you could do is you could take the output of this table here after it's been blended between gasoline and ethanol. It would by default come into the X axis of this. And you could modify that with something else such as wheel slip, which we've already defined in monitors.csv. And then you could make an addition of a negative value here to ignition timing so that you could alter the ignition lookup as a form of traction control. That's a good alternative to the factory method, which closes the throttle and tends to overreact and then be slow to restore, whereas the fast ignition path is very fast and you can immediately take lots of torque out. I think really as an overview without going into all the technical details, that's probably enough to say it does need attention to detail. If you get addresses and types wrong, you could produce incorrect values and like altering any map incorrectly. If you run wildly incorrect ignition time, that could damage the engine. It needs care. It needs testing like all of these things. Nobody would dream of putting custom code into an ECU without carefully testing it. And this is really just the same. 
So it's going to be a small fraction of tuners, really the most expert and the ones that are most clued up on this sort of thing that will want to do this. They know who they are and they know what they want to do with it. They may well package things for other tuners and, and sell them to them, such as custom traction control or new boost control methods or packages of input and output sensors through CAN. We're already testing using this to run five bar sensors on Dazza. We've already been experimenting on four litre changing the torque request during gear shifts. It's already been request, uh, re reused to test ideas for new boost control methods. So I hope that's useful. Um, it is really just an overview to give you an idea of the scope of what can be done rather than getting into all the details of how you can use that. We have written some instructions already. It doesn't yet address the integrals and the enable parts and some of the other actions like displaying values on the power or torque gauge on the virtual cockpits or flash and check engine lights or sending things to CAN. But initially, let's get people testing this with more simple things like traction control and new boost control methods, five bar pressure sensors and that sort of thing. Thanks so much.